In this video we're going to look at a unit system which is going to make it more convenient to deal with the types of quantities which come up in looking at quantum mechanics for atoms and molecules. So when we last looked at the helium atom we had described its Hamiltonian. It's got five terms in total Hamiltonian assuming we have a fixed nucleus. It's got the kinetic energy of electron 1 minus h bar squared over 2 times mass of the electron. Laplacian operator, which is a sum of partial derivatives with respect to each spatial dimension. Uh, the second electron has the same types of terms there, so helium, two electrons there. Then you have the attraction of electron one to the helium nucleus. Charge of plus two here, charge of minus one there, so it becomes a minus two e squared over four pi epsilon naught times their distance. Same thing, distance between electron 2 in the nucleus and they have an attraction there negative indicating the attraction and the two electrons repel each other so that's a positive or repulsive increasing potential energy e squared over 4 pi epsilon not r12 what you can see in here is there's a lot of constants there's a lot of things that during a calculation we would have to carry all around this gets very big and very clunky very fast and you can see that there were the number of terms which we would have to have are just going to blow up very quickly as we go to larger and larger atoms and eventually molecules. So atomic units are going to be a unit system that we're going to use in order to simplify the math of how these uh, equations, how these Hamiltonians, energies, uh, lengths, what have you, that just simplify them into a more convenient scale. Okay, so first off we can look at for length natural unit of length for atomic length scales would be the Bohr radius which is we you know 4 pi epsilon naught h bar squared over mass of the electron times the magnitude of the charge of the electron squared and in atomic units we're just going to set this equal to 1 so this quantity is just going to be called 1 Bohr and one bore is going to be equal to 0 0.529 angstroms which equivalently is 5.29 times 10 to the minus 11th meters so it'll be 52.9 picometers as well okay so that's length in energy what we're going to use is twice the energy of the ground state of the hydrogen atom so this is going to be mass of the electron times charge of the electron to the fourth over 16 pi squared epsilon naught squared times h bar squared and this is going to be set equal to one and this unit is going to be called one Hartree after physicist Douglas Hartree and I'm going to write this in several different units since it's very important to be able to do unit conversions for energy. So this is going to be equal to all of the following 4.36 times 10 to the minus 18th joules. It's going to be 26, 26 kilojoules per mole and kilocalories per mole, which just a quick conversion from kilojoules to kilocalories, 627.5 kilocalories per mole. Or also if you see the, elect the unit electron volts, it's 27.2 EV or electron volts. So you can see if you're familiar with kilojoules per mole from general chemistry or other places, this is quite a large amount of energy. So the energy of a hydrogen atom so the e the energy of the 100 state of the hydrogen atom is going to be minus 0 0.5 hartrees which we could call this eh here or you could also see it written as just minus 0 0.5 capital h for hartree okay so that's length and energy but in order for these to equal 1 in this unit system, there's a whole lot of other things which have to equal 1 as well. So we're going to list those over here. Mass of the electron is going to be set equal to 1. That quantity in SI units is 9.11 
times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. The charge of the electron, or at least the magnitude of the charge on the electron, is going to be 1. That's going to be 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs in SI units. Our old friend h-bar is going to be 1. And h-bar in SI is 1.055 times 10 to the minus 34 joules seconds. And then lastly, the last thing we see here is this grouping for pi epsilon naught. That is also going to be equal to 1. That gives us 1.11 times 10 to the minus 10th. 10 to the minus 10th. The unit there is coulomb squared per joule meter. So inverse on the joule and the meter. Okay, so when we take all these things into account, what do we end up getting for our Hamiltonian of a helium atom? And we'll see how much simpler this ends up being. We get our Hamiltonian is, well, this is 1, this is 1, this is 1, 4 pi epsilon naught is 1. So this all simplifies down to, we could get a minus 1 half del squared 1 plus del squared 2, kinetic energy of electron 1 and electron 2 minus 2 over R1n, distance from electron 1 to the nucleus, minus 2 over R2n, distance from electron 2 to the nucleus, plus 1 over R12, distance between the two electrons. So our Hamiltonian simplifies down into this thing which has far, far fewer constants to work with and not only looks aesthetically better, but it's going to be easier to work with for doing things like calculations, and we're not going to have all kinds of constants which will get lost in the fray as we try to calculate the energies and wave functions for atoms and molecules going forward.